Christians, Lord God, all over the world, believers in every corner of the globe, we lift up the righteous. We pray and loose the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. We loose the word of God on earth as it is in heaven in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you now. Hey, hey, glory to your name. You said whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Lord, Lord God, we loose your tongue around for us this morning. Lord God, we loose the, the regeneration of the Holy Ghost for us this morning in the name of Jesus. We loose new beginnings for us this morning in the name of Jesus. Hey, glory to God. Father, we loose it now. Father, we decree this morning that, that all is well for us. Lord God, we bind up every serpent and every scorpion and all the power of the enemy in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning and we loose them, that we are the heads and not the tails. We are the lenders and not the borrowers. Father, we loose it right now. Lord God, we thank you this morning that, that all is good for us right now. And I want you to say that with me this is right now in the name of Jesus. Say, it is good for me right now. The Holy Ghost change is happening for me right now. And for my family right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost healing is happening in our bodies and our spirits and our minds and the lives of Christians and believers everywhere in the name of Jesus. But God, we bind up now every effort of the devil to kill us, to steal from us, to destroy us, to rob us, to injure us, to sicken us, to disease us, to poison us, to impoverish us. We bind it, Lord, now in the name of Jesus. But God, if we lose Holy Ghost power now for us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we decree that every believer is advanced right now. I want you to receive that right now in the name of Jesus. Say, I am advanced by the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Father, we loose the warning angels of God, the ministering angels of God to go forth and, and war and minister on our behalf and behalf of Christians everywhere. This thing is working for our good. It is changing for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we lose Holy Ghost resurrection power right now in the name of Jesus. We decree that the power of the cross is activated in our lives, in the body of Christ everywhere. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father, we decree this morning that we are a prosperous people. We decree this morning that we are not defeated. Hallelujah. We have more than enough. It is working for our good in the name of Jesus. It is moving on our behalf in the name of Jesus. We loose the wealth of the wicked for our benefit, oh God. And we take the possession now in the name of Jesus. We lose your word to come forth. We pray for Pastor Green this morning in the name of Jesus. We lose your word to come forth. And Father, we count it done now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for reviving Pastor right now. Thank you, Lord, for touching his family right now. Thank you, Lord God, for turning things around for him right now. Thank you, Lord, for redeploying him right now. Thank you for moving on him right now. Thank you for healing him right now. Thank you for lifting him right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we, we stand with him in first lady. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we bear the load with him. Lord God, we take on the burden with him in the name of Jesus. Lord God, that it will not be heavy on him, Father. For you said that there were those that would bear the burden with Moses, that it wouldn't be so heavy on him. Father, we pray that now. We, we take possession now by faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Again, we loose the power of the cross right now. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, in Jesus' name. Again, bless this people forevermore. Forevermore. In the name of Jesus. The remainder of this year that we decree is blessed for us forevermore. We decree that this is the best year of our lives so far. Father, we decree it in the name of Jesus. It is the best year of our lives so far. 
Father, we decree in the name of, of Jesus that the remainder of our years are the best years we've ever had. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord God, we bind up every shortcoming. Lord God, we bind up every roadblock. We bind up every hindrance, every generational curse. We ain't got a delayed mama, late delayed grandmama. We decree in faith it will not delay us. It will not subvert us. It will not hinder us. But we will walk in faith. In the name of Jesus. Father, what our poor parents didn't get that they should have gotten. Lord, we loosen it in our lives. We, we take possession of it now in our lives. We receive it in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for making it happen for us now. In the name of Jesus. They talk about a recession. But we decree there is no recession in the lives of your people. Father, we decree this morning that there is no recession. But God, there is no inflation in the lives of your people. We decree that we have more than enough in the name of Jesus. We take possession of the overflow of all that you have given for us, Lord God. We are living in the overflow in the name of Jesus. We are living in the overflow. Father, we take possession. We live by faith. Yeah, glory to God. We live by the word of God, not by what Sure, First Lady, their family, in the name of Jesus. All that are affiliated with you, Genesis, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that the house is filled. Thank you for the new church being built. Lord God, we lose it. We have not given up. You haven't given up. We will not give it up. Give up. Lord, we take possession now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your increase. Father, henceforth and forevermore, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you rebuke the devil. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you rebuke the devourer. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you rebuke the day, the day of evil and cast the devil out. Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We in agreement, say that with me, we in agreement. In the name of Jesus, it is well in our lives. I've got more than enough. Is working for my good. I'm healed right now. I'm delivered right now. What hasn't worked for me is now working for me. It is already turned for me. In Jesus' name. Say it again like you mean it in Jesus' name. It is well. Father, we thank you now. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go over our vision statement. Read it with me, if you will. The vision of the New Genesis Christian Church is to make new and make great. This refers to helping people experience the new beginning and new life that comes with knowing Christ and the great life that comes with loving and serving Him. Praise the Lord. Our purpose. Christian Church understands our purpose to be fourfold. We believe God established and commissioned the church to exalt the Savior, equip the saint, enlist the servant, evangelize the sinner. Praise the Lord. Let's enjoy worship to get today. Praise the Lord. God bless you.
church said amen. amen. Come on, give God a big hand and clap of praise all over this room. Come on. Amen. We got it. Bless it. Come on, give the praise seat a hand. Amen. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, come on. We'll just do this up. If you love Jesus, just clap your hands for Jesus real loud. Come on. Act like we in church for just a few more minutes. Amen. God be the glory. Amen. For the things that he has done. Amen. Look at somebody down your row and just tell them God has been good to me. Amen. Tell them you don't know what I had to go through to get here. You don't know how I had to struggle to get here. So come on, clap your hands and tell somebody I made it. I made it. Come on, I know you got your mask on, but don't let your mask do the muscle. Come on and tell somebody. God has been good to me. And for about five or six people, I need for you to take about three or four seconds and just clap your hands real crazy like God has been good. Amen. Amen. Listen, it's preaching time. It is. Preaching time, the Bible says, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. We have a preacher in the house today. Amen. He is coming to share with us. Amen. He, uh, he's from the Divine Life Church in Memphis, Tennessee. Amen. Well, Apostle Tony Wade is the pastor. Amen. It looked like he brought some, some people with him. Did you bring some people with you? He brought his family with him. Family. Amen. Y'all give him a hand for me. Amen. Come on. Y'all do better than that. Come on. Amen. We're so happy. Uh, and and this is your wife? And uh, about the wife. I thought that was your daughter, but you brought your wife with you uh, today. Amen. Uh, he's a young man. Amen. He looked like he's on fire for God. Amen. Let me ask you this. How many came looking for something today? Let me see your hand. Here's what I believe. I believe that God has given this young man a word for this house and a word for my life and for your life. Amen. How many ready to receive it? Amen. Here's what I need for you to do. I need for you to stand and give Pastor Kimon Green a new Genesis. Welcome. This is his first time in Olive Branch. He bought his own water. He got his own microphone. He read it. Come on, let's welcome Pastor Green as he comes. Here we go. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir, yes, sir. First and foremost, let's give our honor to Pastor and First Lady of the Sure of New Genesis. Opportunity to bring the word on today. Also, give an honor to God for uh, my leader, Apostle Tony Wade, Prophet Felicia Wade from Divine Life Church. Uh, give an opportunity to come here to minister on today. But, New Genesis, I believe that the Lord gave me a word for you on today. The Lord gave me a word for you on today. I am excited to for what all that, um, God is going to say on today. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm a high energetic type of pastor. Uh, I like to be uncomfortable. Uh, if you shout amen, whatever you do, feel free because you are in the house of the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you, when I was back in my club days, I didn't have no, I didn't have no restrictions. So I'm not going to have no restrictions on me when it's time for me to give God everything that I need to give God. So when I say well, we're going to break some things off on today, I believe the Lord is bringing a breaker's anointing on today. I believe some things are about to shift in your house on today. I believe that the Lord came. I hope you came with an expectation on today. Because the Lord said, I'm bringing the breaker's anointing. I'm about to call this ministry to shift. I'm about to take you into new realm. I'm about to take you into new dimensions. I hope you came for an expectation. I hope you came for a new encounter. There's another level that new Genesis is about to hit on today. There's another atmosphere that God is about to take you to. There's another realm that you're about to experience on today. When I tell you, when I tell you 
you there's some things that's about the shift. I mean, not just your ministry. There's some things about the shift in your family. There's some things about the shift. Revival starts in the inside first before it can travel to anybody else. So there's some things that's about the shift in the inside of you on today. And I strongly believe that the Holy Ghost is in the room right now. I dare you to tap into the presence of the Lord. I dare you to go deeper than what you've ever been before. I dare you to step foot in another realm of the deep end. I dare you to go deep into the water. I dare you to go deep into his presence on today. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's time to go through the other side. It's time to go through the other side. Come on, come on. There's a, after today, there's a version of ministry and life that you see today that you won't see tomorrow. There's another level under the Behasa. There's another level of ministry. There's another level of your life. That, and what, that, what you see today, you will not see tomorrow. I decree that there's a threshold that's about to come through this ministry. I decree that there's a spirit of acceleration that's about to take this ministry to new heights. I decree right now in the mighty name of Jesus that there's another place. I break every wall of limitation. I break every boundary that the enemy tried to step forth on this ministry. I break every boundary that the enemy tried to step forth on your life. I break it right now in the main life in the mighty name of Jesus. There's a train breaking in the spirit right now. I tell you to tap into what the man of God is saying in this house. I tell you to cast forth this like you've never cast it before in this life. Come on, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every wall of restriction is about to come down. Every wall of restrictions is about to come down. I'm going to try not to be up here before you long, but my voice belongs to the Lord. I'm going to speak whatever the Holy Spirit say, um, and we're going to just enjoy what God has to say. So today I come to you, um, as I was in prayer, and I was like, Lord, what, what do you want to say to New Genesis? Lord, I yield my tongue to you, and I want to know whatever you want. For you know who's in the house. You know who's going to be there. You know who's present. You know what they're dealing with. You know the heart. You know everything, God. So you tell me what it is that you want to speak to New Genesis. And as I was in prayer, the Lord gave me the title. The Lord said, I want you to name your message Halftime. So, for, 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 for some might know me in the crowd, some uh, know good brother, the Bailey family, our good friends of mine. And I come from a basketball, I come from a basketball background, the sports world. I played college ball, played high school ball, all these things uh, I'm really involved with, with youth sports now. So I come from a, a, I have a sports background. So when the Lord gave it to me, I was like, oh Lord, I know you're going to do something uh, with this. So the Lord said, name your message halftime. I was like, okay. All right, Lord, I, I hear you now. Now give me what you want me to say. So there are some things that when you deal with halftime, there's, if you, if you understand sports, whether you play football, baseball don't have a halftime, but if you play football, soccer, basketball, any sport, there's a halftime, meaning there's a segment in between halves or in between quarters that where you get to regroup on some stuff. See, halftime can be dangerous or halftime can be successful. Right. So, Pastor Green, what do you mean by that? What I mean by it, if if you come out the first half of, of, of a game and you don't and you don't play the way you need to play, at halftime your coach now has a different conversation to get you going. At halftime, it's either it's either you're down or you're up at halftime. But it can be damaging if you're up sometimes because, because sometimes you can be up and you can forget what you did to even get you there. Amen. So sometimes at halftime, it can become dangerous when you get to the point of where now you don't understand what the coach is doing. The coach now has to give up a new game plan. The coach now has to give you a motivational talk. The coach now has to do things to get you aligned, to get you going for the second half, to get you above in the game. Or... If you're up, the coach now has to keep their momentum going to do what? 
so you can keep the same energy level that you had in the first half. Because we see in sports a lot, a lot of people, once they're up in the first half, what they tend to do is they get comfortable. They start to get complacent. And when they get comfortable, and then when they get complacent, they start to, 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 to do things differently. And so they don't have the same energy level. They don't have the same prep life anymore. They don't have the same uh, 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 motivation to do the things that they once did in the first half. So now when the second half comes, the team that they were just now now starts to come back. The momentum now has shifted. So when I talk about halftime, I want to under, I want you to understand that there are some things that God is trying to shift in your life. But if you're in a comfortable place, you've now given momentum to the devil where now he thinks he can come in and take place that you ain't supposed to give him. So we're going to dive into what halftime really means. There's a, there's a halftime shift that's about to take place in his house. And, and, and it might not be a shift. Everybody might not have the same shift. You heard me say earlier, revival starts in the inside of you. So you all have a different shift that has to take place. But that shift is going to take place for you to come together as one body. Because the body can't function right if something is off. Whether it's the body of Christ, if I hurt my leg right now, now there's a limp, and now I'm not at full capacity. But if the body is functioning fully of what needs to be done, the mission and vision can start to get pushed a little bit harder. Tell me, I, if I got any in the older guys that's in here that... that that they still like to play a little sport sometime, and then you say, hey, I got to work tomorrow. Y'all are going a little bit too hard for me. I, I got to work. I got I to gotta work tomorrow. You know, because if you, you understand if you get hurt, guess what? Something else might struggle. Yeah. If, if, if I get hurt doing something that I'm not supposed to be doing or something that's out of my category for my age now, trying to be young and, and play with 16 year olds, if I get hurt, I now put my family in a spot where I can't provide for them. So if we put ourselves in a spot in the spirit where we now have an opportunity or a put us in a position where we now hurt ourselves in the spirit and give the enemy access to things, now we now put our family in damage of where the enemy now can keep generational curses going. Where the enemy now can push things on our bloodline that we're supposed to be break, uh, curse breakers of. But when we give that space and we do things out of line or out of order, when we move towards what we're supposed to move towards, we can see the fulfillment of God's purpose and mission and vision and destiny. So if you get hurt in the body, not being who you need to be, things start to get stagnant. Things start not to move like they're supposed to move. Amen. Things don't work the way they're supposed to work. So um, we're going to, let's go to Matthew 3, 13. We're going to start at Matthew 3, verse 13 through 17. So as I, as I was preparing for the message, man, God spoke a cold revelation to me. God spoke and said to me, son, Jesus was the halftime of your eternity. Because in the first half, Adam and Eve dropped the ball. In the first half, Adam and Eve didn't, <laughs> didn't accomplish what they were supposed to accomplish. Adam and Eve didn't fulfill the game plan that God had. So now because Adam and Eve didn't fulfill the game plan that, that, that God had, now God had to go restructure a whole other play. Now God had to give us something different for us to even be reconnected with him. So Jesus was your halftime of your eternity. But see, if you, if you watch Space Jam, the original Space Jam, I ain't talking about this new Space Jam. I'm talking about the original Space Jam with Michael Jordan. And, and, and it was a halftime. The Toon Squad was getting killed in the first half. But then here come halftime. It's so about halftime. I, we got to get to a point in life where we where we start to get excited about halftime. Because I remember the halftime point in my life when I was living the way God told me not to live. But then there was a day when I was living on Snyder Road in Memphis, Tennessee, when the Spirit of the Lord dropped in my house and said, you've been running enough. 
Now I need you to come to me. Now I got a different path for your life. So that was a halftime moment for my life that shifted my whole realm. That shifted my family. That shifted my wife. Shifted my kids. Shifted everything about me. When we go back to Space Jam, everybody remembers the, the secret stuff. Everybody knows what the secret stuff was. See, see, Toon Squad was, was defeated mentally. The, the, what, were they the Goon Squad in the first one? I think they were. Whatever they were, the, the other squad had already defeated them mentally. So here, you come in halftime, you got old grandma walking on the crutch, you got little Tweety Bird laid out, you got all these things, and now here come Bugs Bunny just with a bottle of water. And he, he took some tape and wrote on it the secret stuff. But he had them to believe something was in there to get them to be who they needed to be. So when you get in that halftime moment, I'm going to tell you what your secret stuff is. Your secret stuff is the Holy Ghost. Because God said, if Jesus said, it's better than I go so the help can come. So something about the secret stuff. See, God can, can, can take the foolish things to conform the wise. So there's something about the secret stuff. When you understand that my secret is the Holy Ghost, it now gives me activation of things that I knew I couldn't do by myself. It's now giving me the activation to understand I was weak in this area, but because I just drunk my secret stuff, because I'm full of the Holy Ghost, because I know how to pray in tongues, because I know how to get in my secret space in my closet, and when I'm going through a situation, I can say, I can now go into another place. See, when you got Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will make you look like something that you're not. But see, that's why we can't get full of pride. That's why we can't get comfortable. That's why we can't think that we can get God's glory. I'm going to tell you, that's what the secret stuff is. See, when we understand the secret stuff, even Jesus needed the secret stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, even Jesus needed the secret stuff. And you're going to see it right here in Matthew 3. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is, pro excuse me, it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out the water. At the moment, heaven was open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a, like a dove and a lightning on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son who I love. With him I am well pleased. Even Jesus needed the secret stuff for them last, for them last three years of what's about to happen to him. For that last moment, he needed, because if he didn't need the secret stuff, there was a moment when Jesus said, can this cup be passed for me? But God, your will, not my will. Let you know that Jesus felt everything that we felt as a human. See, when we understand how we can carry the secret stuff, we start to realize that we start to realize that God didn't call us to have a comfortable Christian lifestyle. See, nothing about our walk with Christ was called to be comfortable. Nothing about our walk was, was, was meant to just be mediocre. Nothing about our walk was for us to just come into a pew every Sunday. Jesus didn't, didn't leave his privilege in heaven for us to just be normal. Jesus didn't put aside the attributes of God. Because when you understand the fullness of Jesus, you won't start, even though Jesus was perfect, and, and, and I, we all know this, but when you understand the full attributes of Jesus, we start to see and we can start comparing ourselves a little bit better. What do you mean by that, Pastor Green? When you understand, even though Jesus was God, he was man. So there was things that, that Jesus did on earth that he couldn't do without God, that he couldn't do without Holy Spirit. But see, we only look at Jesus as God that we never understand that he was flesh. So we say, we give these excuses when we fall. Well, ain't nobody perfect. Yeah, we all fall short of the glory. 
But I'm not going to allow that to be an excuse to, 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 to pour me over into sin. Because I understood that Jesus suffered things that we all suffer today. Jesus felt pains that we felt that we feel today. Because he even though he was God, he was man. He laid attributes of God down just so he could fulfill the route that he needed to fulfill. Why? At the end, he knew for the first time he was going to be totally separated from God when he died for our sins. So a comfortable Christian life is not in the Bible. Name, go look in the Bible and tell me one person that had a comfortable Christian life. We see persecution. We, we see things. We see all these things. So God just didn't call us to be regular. Just to come to church. Jesus did not think that when he died on the cross. When he died on the cross, he knew what he was doing. We are called to have life abundance. We are called to be prophets. We are called to be the lender and not the borrower. We are called to be the head and not the tail. These are things that Jesus, like, we are called. When Jesus died on the cross, he took every key from every devil that could ever try to come against your life. So I'm going to tell you, when you understand the attributes and the fullness of, of the man that died for you, you start to have a commanding prayer. There's no weak, begging prayer with a Christian lifestyle. There that shouldn't be a position. You should, you should not be in a position of a weak person when it's time for when the enemy tries to come against your life. I, I wish I had some people in here that had a war mentality, that understood, or that, that was once in the streets before, that understood when the opposition came against me. It wasn't time for me to back down. It was time for me to stand up and start to decrease some stuff. See, half time is about the shift in your life. That when you leave on today, you're going to start decreeing things that you've never decreed before. You're going to start speaking life over your kids like you've never spoken before. I dare you to start going when you get home. I dare you to start going to your house and anoint every door. I dare you to anoint your neighborhood. See, there's some connection. There's power in connection. I wish I had some folks that, that knew how to pray for other people. I want my intercessors that, that God can wake up in the morning and say, I need you to pray for these people. But because you pray for these people, I've now put a hand of protection around them. I tell you to start going to the throne with another level of commanding, another level of understanding that the devil don't run nothing here. That the devil don't move nothing. That the devil don't stop nothing. He might try to throw a little opposition. But I'm going to tell him who I am because I serve the God that says I am who I say I am. Go and tell them I am saved. I tell you to start telling the devil I am saved that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am saved that I'm the head and not the tail. I am. I am because I am saved. I'm not I am because I, because I said it. I am who I am because I am saved. You start telling the enemy every time an opposition comes, this ain't what I am saved. See, then you start building your faith up a little bit more. Then you start going to another level a little bit more. Then you start walking with a little bit more of a different confidence in, in, in the things that you see, that the things that you don't see, that you understand, well, God spoke this over my life. God spoke this over New Genesis. God spoke these things. Because I'm telling you, when each and every last one of y'all shift, there's going to be another realm that this, about to, that this place is about to go to. I don't know about you, but I truly believe God. There's a celebration that's about to hit this ministry, Pastor. There's under the Mahasha. The Lord said, all, all I need for you to do is get in position. Because there's another realm. Because Pastor LaShore can't touch that wall by itself. But if we start connecting, can I get some people to help me right quick? Can I, can I, can I get some people to help me right quick? Come here, Elder. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here. Let me, let me just use you right quick. Pastor LaShore is cashing out vision. But if I connect with him, and then you go connect with them, and we stretch out, and then you stretch out. But when there's a shift that's about to take place in this house, there's about to be another spirit of unity that's about to propel this vision. That's about to propel this ministry. That's about to propel the vision and mission of this house. See, when halftime hit, 
when you're down, see, see, when you're down, if you ever play sports, when you're down, and 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 when you're in and when you're in halftime, and the coach coming there for a little motivation, see, things don't change unless the players buy in. That's right. That's right. Things don't change unless the players buy in. Because if you don't buy in, you're going to keep doing the same thing you've been doing. So there's a level of buy-in that got to come. There's another level of commitment. There's another level of sacrifice. There's another level of things that have to take place for, it to, to, for God to catapult it where it needs to go. I'm telling you, halftime is, is, is crazy. See, God also showed me, let's go to Let's go to Acts 2. Oh, you gonna put it? Oh, there you go. Let's go to Acts 2. So when you're looking about what Acts is a halftime book. Okay. Acts is a halftime book because before Acts, it was the Gospels. The Gospels talked about who? Jesus. But see, in Acts, you see the transformation. Of now it just went from Jesus doing everything to the disciples doing it. And now it took the disciples to push the vision that Jesus left behind for them. Because now, let's go to, we go to Acts, when the day of Pentecost came, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to the rest of each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They're going to secret stuff. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So here, here it is. Now there were, now there were saying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in a bewilderment because each of each one heard their own language being spoken. Amen. Amen. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So here it is, halftime. They just drunk their secret stuff. Amen. Amen. They just got full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But then when you read on, you see now what happens after they got full of the Holy Ghost. After they drunk their secret stuff, after after Toon Squad came out in the second half and they started killing and they started doing things, why? Because they now feel a, a level of confidence that they did not have because they felt like the secret stuff was doing some things for them. So I need you to understand, you might be in a comfortable situation. And you might not think you can do it, but God said, I've ordained you to do that call. God said, I called you before you was even in your mother's womb. But if you tap into the Holy Ghost, you'll understand it's not me that's doing it no way. I'm not up here because I don't even like speaking in front of people. I've waited for being a pastor for 15 years. I didn't want nothing to do with it, but I have to understand the grace. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. I'm here to tell you today, whatever God is calling you to do, his grace is sufficient for you. So whatever has to happen for this ministry, whatever has to happen for your personal life, God already got you covered. You ain't got to worry, but I tell you to tap into your secret stuff. Look at your secret stuff and have you doing things that you never thought you could do. But when you try to do things out of your own might, when you try to do things, you're going to always feel defeated. See, Toon Squad felt defeated until they drunk the secret stuff. It wasn't to, and the secret stuff for them was number one. It wasn't number one. But the fact Bugs Bunny was smart and said, let me write the secret stuff on there. See, the world trying to figure out how y'all know stuff. They ain't, they ain't gonna understand the secret stuff. To them, it was to Toon Squad, it was just water. To the world, we crazy. Yeah. I'd rather be crazy any day for God. Yeah. I, I'd rather look crazy. They, 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 whatever you whatever you can call me, I I'd do that any day for God. Because I understand how I'm able to do what I'm able to do. I understand my secret stuff. So when we look at what happened, there was a shift right here that happened in Acts. Now the apostles are ready to move forward. 
Now the apostles are ready to do the mandate that God has for them to do. Because if you see, if you keep reading in Acts right next to this, then Peter now is performing healing. But before Acts, neither one of the disciples performed a healing miracle because it was all Jesus. But Jesus said, you would do greater works than I. So I'm telling you right now, Genesis, it's time for you to do greater works in this season. It's time for you to take things up in this season. It's time for you to go to another level because there's a shift that has taken place and in the atmosphere, and God said, whatever I loose in heaven will be loose here on earth. I dare you to start grabbing and say, God, I'm taking everything that you have for me. I'm taking everything that you have for new Genesis. I'm taking everything. I'm pulling out that I'm a hot shot. I'm pulling my stuff down. I'm pulling my stuff down. See, some of y'all got some things that's been hit, that's been lingering over you that you've been scared to touch because you say, God, ain't no way I can do this. God, ain't no way I can touch this. God, ain't no way we can go there. God said, why not you? Why can't you be the person of our call? For our call to Genesis to be a household, not that I'm a whole shot, to be a household name. For our call to Genesis to take things to another place. I call to Genesis. It's time to go outside of the four walls. It's time for y'all to end that I'm a whole shot. I see another level of evangelism that's about to hit this church. I did it be hit shot. There's time for another level. There's no more the norm. There's no more the norm. There's no more the norm. Because now, here it is, the disciples. The disciples are now performing the works that Jesus just performed. See, in Space Jam, Toon Squad has started to perform just like MJ could perform. So this next level, New Genesis is going to perform just like Pastor and First Lady. Amen. See, in this next phase, you start to understand, God, what's on their life is on my life. Yeah. I pray that at my, for, at, with my church, God, what's on my leaders is on my life. Because that's who I'm connected to. What's on their life is on my life. In the books of Acts, we see that. The shift. The shift took place. The shift took place. The shift took place. And so God's like, it's a shift that's happening right here before your eyes. There's something different that's about, I'm telling y'all. I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, there are things that's about to that's that's about to break. I'm talking when I say break, break. When I say y'all ever seen a levy break? Y'all ever seen a levy break? Like uh, uh, I'm talking about levy like that's holding up a lot of water. Yes, yes. There's about to be a breaking. Now, when I say y'all finna experience a new wave of his glory like y'all never experienced before, like if God, there's a like there's a breaking. The enemy has tried to put a cover on this house, but God said I'm re I'm removing the covering. I'm removing the veil. I'm removing the veil off this house on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't even know where my notes are. I just follow Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. See. Ooh. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. So, part of this shift is that, that God spoke to me. I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. It's about having a commanding prayer. Understanding your identity. See, when you understand your identity, you can be who God who God needs you to be. Yeah. Like transparent moment. Like I've been pastoring doing ministry for eight years straight now. Like I'm like full time ministry. And literally, I was just telling my wife that. I think out of the whole eight years, 
I just felt the peace that I've never felt before when it came to when it came to preaching the gospel. Like I always I, I never like lacked confidence because I knew it wasn't me. But still there was a peace of where I felt like God, I still got to understand my fullness of who I am. Like, you know, like I got the DNA of divine life. I got the DNA of my leader, Apostle Tony Wade. But God, who are you calling me to be in this earth? Who? And I'm not saying it to say I'm, I'm, I'm leaving divine life or starting a church. No, I'm not saying it. I'm saying is I need to know my full identity so God can use me in the fullness of how he needs to use me. Because each and every last one of y'all are created differently. But because you are created differently, you have to understand your identity in yourself and be and come to grips with it and embrace it so you can now push the identity of this house. But you have to understand what is the identity of this house so you can be fully equipped with it to move forward. So there's there's different things when when you start. There's a different swagger about yourself when you. You know, all my men, if you know, you know, thought you grew up a little scrawny and then you start lifting weights and, you know, start maturing. Now you like, you know, probably in elementary, middle school, I felt like I couldn't get no girl, but now I feel like everybody called me handsome. You know, we, we, all, been, we all been through that moment uh, growing up as young men, you know. Uh, now I feel like I could, you know, in, in the old days, I could pull anything I want. But see, when, that's the that's the confidence that when it comes when it comes to, that's, the, that's the confidence that when it comes but see I take those same things and I just all I did was if I was this way in the world ain't no way I'm gonna be this way in the kingdom I'm, I can't be different because I'm gonna shift things and there's a sanctification that came with me but God even through the sanctification even through the sanctification God was able to keep who I am so everything that I did over here. I just change it in my language and do it over here. So when I had that confidence and thought I was the man in another type of way that the enemy wanted me to have, now I just get full of the secret stuff and now I'm on this side. I still think I'm the man, but I'm a man that's full of Holy Ghost. I'm a man that's full of integrity. I'm a man that's full of love of my wife. I'm a man that's full of the word of God. I'm a man that's full of truth. I'm a man that's full of discipline. I'm a man of what the fruits of the spirit said that I'm supposed to be. So because of that, I still have a certain level of confidence that comes with it. So now that I have that certain level of confidence, I don't allow the enemy to think he's going to run up on me and there's not going to be a fight back. I don't allow the enemy to think he's just going to throw spiritual darts my way and I'm just going to lay down and just think he's going to crawl over me. The devil is, the, saying you is a lie. You, I'm going to call you for what you is. See, see, I don't, I don't give the enemy credit, but I don't neglect what he's doing. See, some of us, we try to overlook, overlook talking about, oh, the, the devil surely is busy. I, I take that out your language right now. The devil might be busy, but I got a God that don't sleep no slumber. So just because he's busy, guess what? My, my God, active. My God, active. He, he's an active enlisted of the army. He is the general. He is everything that he say he is. Talking about the devil is busy. Well, guess what? If he busy, it's time for us to get busier. He don't run nothing. Last time I checked, Jesus took the keys to everything. See, it, it's just like a bully. See, until you stand up to that bully, that bully gonna think he's gonna keep doing what he's doing. See, until you, until you realize, until that bully realize that oh, oh, they scrapping too. I'm a South Memphis joker. That he he scrapping too. Until he realize and understand that you who you say you are. Because I'm gonna tell you, the enemy and the devil's really scared of you. Because they don't understand that I'm a hot shot. The same power that resurrected Jesus is the same power that we walk with every day. So if we understand that power. We understand that can't no devil in hell stop what God got for me. You might try to put a roadblock. But I promise you, I know how to get through it. You might try to put an obstacle, but I know how to step over it. See, see, the obstacle is just for you to lose faith. 
the obstacles is just for you to try to forget who your identity is. But when you come with it and who God calls you to be, can't nobody change it. Can't nobody, can't nobody dictate who you are in this spirit realm. So there's, a, there's another level of confidence that we got to walk in. There's another level of abilities that we got to walk in. There's another level of, of, of faith that we got to walk in and understand who God called us to be. We, we, we got to know who we are. Because when you don't know who you are, it's easy for you to get pumped. It's easy for you to get pumped when you don't know who you are. But when you know your identity, you can stand on who you are no matter what nobody say. See, we look in the Bible and see how the disciples dealt with persecution. Where everybody, even not even just the disciples, when you go back to Daniel and and you, you, you see when he got thrown into the lion's den and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like all these people that dealt with obstacles that the enemy tried to throw to get them to stop calling on, G, uh, calling on the Lord's name. They didn't. Why? Because they were solid on their foundation. They were solid on their belief. See, when you're solid on your foundation, it's more than just coming filling up a pew on a Sunday and giving him a little bit of praise, giving him a little bit of worship. See, when we solid on our foundation, we now take God everywhere we go. No matter what realm I'm in in the workplace, no matter if I'm at the gas station, I don't want to be separated from who God called me to be. There's no in-between with me. It's either I'm all in or, or, I'm, or I'm not. That's just that's just me. I don't I don't I don't I'm not gonna hide nothing. I'm not gonna put on a mask. I'm not, like there's there's nothing. I don't I don't wear veils. Whatever you see is what you're gonna see no matter where you see me at. Because I'm confident in who I am. So when you when you have a when you have a certain level of confidence, you start to let's go to Matthew 10 1. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this this story. Uh, a great man of God, great general. Uh, they call him Daddy Hagen, Kenneth Hagen. Have you ever heard of him? Uh, great general in the, in the faith. But I want to tell you, yeah, I, I, I heard a story of Kenneth Hagen. He was sharing a story, and in, in, in this story, Kenneth Hagen, what 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 happened was he he was he was in the vision. And while he was in a vision doing prayer, he said he was talking to Jesus. He said he was talking to Jesus straight forward. And while he was talking to Jesus, what, what happened, he said uh, a demon came in the vision. And he said, why? While he was talking, the, the, the demon just interrupted him in Jesus' conversation, just all in between them, just, and he can't understand nothing Jesus saying. He said, but Jesus ain't break his stride in talking. Jesus ain't stopped nothing that he was doing. Jesus kept, he said he was getting so frustrated. He was like, God, you ain't gonna do nothing. You, Jesus, like, you ain't gonna do nothing. You don't see this devil right here? You, you, you ain't gonna do nothing. And, and he said about, and finally, in the vision, he just got tired. And he was just like, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and cause you to leave. And he said that it was gone out the vision. And he said, then he could start to hear God's voice clearly again. Yeah. He said, he asked God in a vision, God, why you ain't doing nothing about the devil? About that demon that was, that was interrupting our conversation. He said, I'm now with my father. I don't rebuke devils no more. I gave you the authority to do so. So you might be in a stuck place right now in your life because you're waiting on God to do something. But God, like, I've already given you the power. I'm just waiting for you to access it so I can bag you up. You ever, you ever had somebody that you got to fight with that's like, I ain't going to throw the first punch. But once you throw the first punch, I got your back. Once, once you throw the first punch, I'm going to swing with you. I swing and you swing. So that, all God is waiting on you to swing.
thing in the spirit. All God is waiting on you to say, devil, you in my way, so I'm about to throw the first punch. And then you got a, oh, I thought I, you got a host of angels that's about to bag you. Here come Michael. Here come every spiritual angel that's about to bag you right now to come against everything that the enemy has tried to throw against you. But see, even then, and then and Daddy Hagen, when God gave him that revelation, he was years in the faith. He was years in the faith when God gave him that revelation. But God told him, I don't rebuke devils no more. Jesus like, you asked me to do something that I don't do. I gave you the authority. The authority was shifted. It was halftime. Halftime been over with. Now we're in the fourth quarter and you still asking me to do something that I, I did in the first half? The first half, I, I, I fulfilled my mission. The first half, I already been filled and completed. I've been to the keys. But now here comes the second half and you still asking me to do stuff that I've already that I already won? You asking me to go back and repeat something that's all that that's been defeated? So we look at Matthew 10 1. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. So we understand halftime, the shift. Everything that Jesus did has already been shifted to us Amen. as the body of Christ. Yes. It's already been shifted. So now we have a now we can we can go and have a more commanding prayer. We can pray with boldness. We we, we can have a, a certain walk that when the enemy tries to do things, we know how to combat. We know how to fight. We know how you gonna like. There is no weakness in you. When it comes to the spirit of God. Amen. Greater. What's the verse? Everybody should know that. Greater is he. That's within who? Me. Then he that's what? In the world. What is that talking about? I'm full of the Holy Ghost. The world ain't no more full of the devil. Yeah. So guess what? Greater is it within me. Yeah. So I got all power. The devil just got a little bit of power. Yeah. It's like it's like the boss versus the manager. Like, the manager just got a little authority, but when a boss come and tell you something, Jesus. who you gonna believe? Jesus. So the enemy lied to you as a little manager of power, talking about you can't do this, you can't do that. But God is the boss telling you, I put that in your life. So who you gonna believe? Authority. A true authority. True Authority. So halftime is a team. At halftime, this is when a team has to come forward to win. See, in this sport, there's a halftime. They're all team sports. So that means it takes all of us to come forth to be the team. So as we, let's go to Acts 16, 16. So we're going to look at how, how Paul and Silas Broke some things as a team. Once, when they were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At the moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone. You know the world get mad when you, when you stop their money. Making money was gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating custom unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been <coughs> severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanding the guard to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet 
in the stocks about midnight. Yeah. Somebody tell your neighbor midnight. 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 We're going to get back to midnight. Okay. Just remember you told your neighbor midnight. Yeah. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns yeah. to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake mm -hmm. that the foundation of the prisons were shaken. Yeah. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Yeah. So, uh, let, so when, when we look at what Paul and Silas did, Paul and Silas just, just joined in together as a team to make some shake on the earth. So because of their praise, when you look at Paul and Silas, there was a moment where they could have given up. They were beaten with rods, they were chained, and they were thrown in jail, and they were humiliated in front of the people. But even in the middle of, of, of humiliation, what they have, prayer. Yeah. In the middle of being bound, they have prayer and praise. Yeah. And because they have prayer and praise, God was able to shake some things loose. Yeah. So I'm telling you, in your half time, the, enemy, the first half of your, the first half, the enemy might have threw some things at you that have now put you in a stuck place. They have now put restrictions over you. Yeah. You think your hands change. You think your legs change. You think you're in a cell. But God said, I'm opening every cell door in this space. I'm opening every, I'm breaking every chain. Because we look what happened. Paul and Silas were in a squeeze moment. But when you're squeezing, you're going through life, whatever in you is about to come out. So if you got doubt in you, guess what? Doubt is about to come out. But if you got praise in you, if you got faith in you, no matter how tight the enemy squeeze you, no matter how tight that snake try to wrap around you and get you to suffocate, even if I got a little breath, I'm going to praise God. Even though I got just a little bit of energy left, I'm going to use that little bit of energy to praise God. Because what don't happen? There's some things, there's some things that might be taking place in your life right now. And because they taking place right now, the enemy's already think he won. So the enemy thought he won when Paul and Silas was in jail. But then what happened? There was a praise that took place. There was a prayer that took place. At midnight, God said at midnight, I'm about to change your life. If, if you just give me an ounce of praise, if you give me an ounce of prayer, at midnight, I'm about to shake some things loose. I wish I had some folks that knew how to shake. Y'all remember the old song, Shake the Devil Off? Y'all went to old shake them chains off because God is ready to shift some things in this place. See, whatever in you going to come out. See, I don't care. We all have been to the place where, you know, Toothpaste running low. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then there's a squeeze that happens at the end. Yeah. You either fold it up uh, this way on, or you fold it up sideways. Yeah. But even at the end of the day, I don't expect nothing else to come out but toothpaste. Yeah. Yeah. So no matter how hard the enemy try to squeeze you, if you're a true child of God, I expect you to be on your walk with God. Yeah. And no matter how God, how the enemy try to think, he about to twist and turn you. We expect praise to come out. No matter what the enemy done, the enemy tried to send me to jail. And then the moment I was in there, see, Paul and Silas, y'all don't know my story. See, Paul and Silas resonate with me because I've been in jail in Atlanta for five days. I was situated, and I was a man of God. By a situation at the end that the enemy tried to use against me that didn't but God. All I'm going to say is, but God, but you want to know what happened? When I got there, Pastor, the first thing I did was God. It was the first thing I did was pray. But the, and I knew I didn't belong in this situation. There was a misunderstanding somewhere. So God, whatever the enemy think he got access to, I bind it and I stop it right now. I put, I, I cut, I sever every snake right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I sever every head of every snake that's trying to come and get y'all right now in the mighty name of Jesus. See, 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 but, but here's the great thing of, of Paul and Silas that I really love. See, Pastor, even though Paul and Silas was praying and they got free, everybody around them got free. Yeah. See, 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 
you praying for some family members, you might be going through some stuff. Yeah. But just because you praying, they just got free. Yeah. So God didn't just break the shackles off them. God broke the shackles off everybody that was in the jail cell. It was on them whether they stayed in it or not. But God opened every cell. He broke every shackle off everybody that was connected to Paul and Silas in that jail. He broke every shackle. And see, when, when we look at midnight, we understand. See, see, midnight is the time of the day. A time of the night where it's, it's 12 a.m. 12 a.m. means what? A new day. So tonight at 12 a.m., it's going to be June 20th. But even though it's June 20th, it's still like June 19th because it's dark. So sometimes at midnight, God can be shifting things in your life, but you still think it looked like the old thing. But God said, if you just tap into another level of faith, and you just tap in and understand in six more hours, the sun's going to come up. In six more hours, the sun is coming up. But you still stuck that it's only midnight. But God telling you, I've changed it. I've healed you from this. But you think, oh God, I'm still in pain. Ain't no way you heal me. But God said, if your faith connects to what I've said, you'll believe that six more hours that the sun is coming up. Meaning there's a new day. So God changed some things. God shifted some things in his house. He He's shifting some, some mindsets. It's got to start with every person that's already here connected to this vision. Because more people is about to flood these doors. More people is about to flood these doors. And when they flood them, they cannot just get the vision and the identity from Pastor and First Lady. See, it's something about rubbing elbows. That I believe that anybody that connect here should be able to connect fully because they can connect to each and every last one of y'all too. So that identity is huge in this next phase. But God said it's halftime. Halftime. He's released everything that needs to be released. So, New Gents, let me ask y'all, are y'all ready for this next phase? Are y'all ready for this next phase? Are y'all ready for this next phase? I'm telling you, the second half is about to be, oh my God, it's about to be a half that you will never forget. You're going to see the shift in people. You're going to see the shift in your worship. You're going to see the shift in your praise. There's another realm of his glory that's about to fall in this place. I want to do an altar call for, first I want to do it for, if you feel like you've been in a stuck place for some time now, and you're saying, God, this I'm, I'm in my halftime moment, but I feel like I've been just stuck, and I know it's time to break free for me to fully be who you call me to be. I want you to come forward. I want to pray with you. Now, let me tell you something. Being stuck don't always mean sin. Being stuck don't always mean I'm living in sin. See, I went through a stuck place mentally where I had to fully embrace who God called me to be, but I was not living in nothing dealing with sin. But I had just got complacent with just, God, I'm cool being in the back. I'm cool being in the back. I'm telling you, there's a breaker's anointing here on today. That God is wanting to break some things off your bloodline. But God said, I'm setting new ways in your bloodline, in your generation. 
for things in your bloodline will not go forth with you from this day forth. And generation after generation after generation, I'm talking about the anointing. See, we talk about generational wealth, but God said, I'm trying to release a glory generational wealth. A, a, a glory anointing that travels through generation where generations after generation after generation is carrying the glory of God everywhere they go. So if you're in that place, I promise you, you don't have to be ashamed. I was once there. Just to accept the fullness of who God called me to be and walk in it completely. generational mantle that you're called to pick up. He said, don't deny it just because you're a woman. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And we release the fire of the Holy Ghost now. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, I call every under the head. We release every call in the spirit right now. To come forth, God said, I'm giving you new tongues. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. There's a standard of a Musa. God, we thank you for freshness. We thank you for freshness over her life, yes, In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God, that the halftime shift is you take out the new realm. New dimensions by your glory. By your glory, by your glory, by your glory. For the Lord said, it's not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. And if you do it, I, I grace you. I did a whole shit. I grace you. And the Lord said, you're not behind. You're right where I want you to be. 
you not behind you right the way you pick up now. If you pick up now, I will restore every year that the enemy tried to take from you. There is a spirit of restoration that's on your life. The enemy has tried to steal some things out of your life, but God said, I'm restoring it now. I'm restoring it now. I'm restoring it now. I'm restoring the peace. I'm restoring your joy. I'm restoring your joy, says the Lord. I'm restoring your joy. Let's give God some praise in this place. Pastor Shore, you want to do the altar call for the house? If you're in here today and this message bless you, or you know God was talking to you on today and you have not given your life to the Lord, believe with your heart and confess your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. The altar is open for you. If you want to come today and give your life to the Lord, the altar is open for you. It's one thing for sure that we do not play about. Anytime we got a chance to minister the gospel. Anytime we got a chance to, to present Jesus. We got to let people know and understand the consequences of not living for God. And not giving your life to God. You're paying a debt that's not meant for you to pay. It's already been paid for. So if you're in here today, or if you're in here today and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, you said, Lord, I've given my life to you, but I've fallen short. I've, I've been going through some paths and some, and some ways and going down some highways that I know I shouldn't be going down. And I want to rekindle my fire. I want to rekindle that relationship back with you. You come to the altar. Come on, come on. I know we can do better than that. Glory! The doors of the church are open. If you're a guest here today and, and you would love to be a part of Genesis ministry, you can come.
come down and they will connect you. But let's give God a last shout of praise for this world today. Hallelujah. Come on, give Pastor Green a hand. Amen. Come on, give Pastor Green a hand. Come on, come on. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being obedient. Amen. To the Spirit and God and allow God to use you in this place. Amen. Amen. I see. I see this young man going somewhere. How are you? 31. Like 31, like a 3 and a 1. I remember I was 31. I used to preach like that when I was 31. Amen. But he is, he is anointed and I love the way I was sitting there watching him. And I was looking at how he was being obedient to the Spirit of God and uh, relaying what the Spirit wanted him to say. And uh, he don't even know this, but there's some three or four things he mentioned that was confirmation. Uh, and I think me and Tiffany had talked about some stuff this weekend. Uh, he came back and confirmed some stuff. Amen. Amen. Listen, I don't care what nobody said. Uh, God knows what he's doing and he knows when to send me. I had no idea he was even coming to, to this week. And... Uh, we thank God that uh, you let God use you, Amen. and uh, we pray that you would uh, continue uh, to stand on the wall, stand in the gap, yeah. and prophesy and preach to the people of God. Amen. Amen. How did he do, wife? Did he do all right? Did he do good? Uh, I got a little worried one time. <laughs> he, was, he was getting ready to go over. <laughs> I, I helped you out. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was going to be sleeping outside. <laughs> Yeah, 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 he got a little carried away, you know. Yeah, but he didn't need that bad. Yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> but his microphone will get you in some trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah he, he, he's like, he can pull all of them. <laughs> I had to cut you off, Richie. <laughs> I ain't got no room at the house. <laughs> Thank God for you. Thank God for the family that came. Y'all come on, give them another hand. Amen. Listen, we get ready to uh, go. So happy to have Sister Three back in the house. Amen. Just glad to be back in the house. Amen. She's been in the hospital, Pastor. Amen. God restored her. And we look at we look at kind of bad. But God. Amen. Amen. Y'all come on, give sister Steve a hand for me. Amen. In the first time you visited, you visited with us for the first time. New Genesis, come on, let's welcome all of them real quick. Amen. 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 So happy you all came. Then I want to thank Yelda for opening up and uh, uh, getting things uh, started for us. Uh, I got about two more weeks, uh, Yelda. And then I'll be back preaching. My voice is getting right now. And I've been practicing at home. <laughs> been practicing at the house. And TK, when I come back, I'm going to stretch all the way out to 780 high. That's all right, Chris. Tell you not. The 20 minute sermon, the 30 minute, I, I'm not doing them no more. I'm not doing them. 
I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready. One hour and 15, one hour and 30 minutes is what I'm going to be preaching from now on. Amen. Amen. I sit up and watch the ball and the Celtics for three hours the other night. And, uh, and so certainly I can listen to myself preach. Uh-uh. What, 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 what you doing now? You cut, my, you cut me off. I'll tell, I tell you what you do, brother. <laughs> Today your last day back there. <laughs> Cut that off. Amen. Let's get ready to give. Amen. Amen. Yes, he is. He said it. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Several ways that we can give. Amen. Sister Witch has it. Amen. You can text to give. 662. 371 New G662371 6394. Uh, give it a five New Genesis uh, Christian Church or the website www.newgenesisob.com. And if you got a check card, then that should be an envelope directly in front of the seat that you're sitting in. Amen. We prepared to uh, give a little stand all over the room. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, God, we thank you now for every gift and every giver. Ask God that you would take them and multiply it. God, as only you can. God bless some in this place, 30, 60, 90, even a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, we pray now that no person or no family go lack or suffering what they have sown and given in this place. God, it's in Jesus' name we pray and we all say together, Amen. Amen. How are we going to do it? A little walk? Uh, how, how are we going to do it, Ty? Amen. Brother Tyrone said he'll come to y'all.
Let everybody stand as we dismiss. Father, we thank you, God. Father, we honor you for who you are. We praise you. We give you all glory. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. We pray, God, that the word that was spoken on today, God, would pierce the hearts like never before on us. Father, we pray, God, we thank you for the shift, God. We thank you for the halftime momentum, God, as we catapult into this next phase of our life, in the next phase of the ministry, Father. We thank you, God, for where you're taking us, God. We thank you for your kavod falling in this place. We thank you for your glory as we go our separate ways, Father. Father, I pray that your angels will be encamped around us, Father, and that your peace will be on us like never before. We thank you, God, and we just give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day and an awesome week.